Welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have us Tom. Maybe. Maybe behind a mic, who knows? Adam. Hello, hi. And Josh. Hey, it's me. And <laughs> myself, I guess technically I should probably include myself. Not sure how that works, uh, but yes, I'm here. Eh, eh. Eh, 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 kind of. Eh, eh, I could take you or leave you. Yeah, no, I, I, that's pretty much how I am. It's like, I'm kidding. Eh. I'm kidding. Yeah, so how was you guys that this week? Be, that would be rude. My week was good. Pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, so, so. so I'll talk to Tom's eh, because, you know, yeah. the lure of Seattle outside of the, you know, the hipster ass left bullshit that everyone loves, <laughs> it's the weather. You don't get hot. You don't get cold. It's just perfect until you get an excessive perfect until you get an excessive heat warning in the middle of august where you have three straight days <laughs> of over 90 it's yeah, been what's that all fucking, about? <laughs> fucking miserable and i moved to all i i moved here specifically to get away from this shit yeah <laughs> and i what saw one of the funniest things i've ever seen on my phone so um sad news there's a little bit of actual news. There's wildfires currently going on in British Columbia, which is about two hours north of Seattle. It's the mm-hmm. province right above Washington. Um, well, during this hot streak, I look at my, we're out walking with my team, like, man, it is really fucking weird. What is going on? Look at your phone. And it doesn't say that it's cloudy. It doesn't say that it's foggy. It doesn't say that it's hazy. It's smoky. Smoke. <laughs> the weather, the weather was, is smoke. The weather was eighty nine and smoke. So, so keep in mind, like ma- mar- marijuana has been legalized in Washington for a very long time. So it's not like it's not like the law right. just kicked in and was like, "Oh, this boy, is boy, it, bro. Come on, let's do it." No, it, yeah. Apparently, these wildfires have been burning strong enough and long enough to fucking smoke up the Seattle skyline. It looks like a dense fog outside. Yeah, That's so you, you know the pictures they always give of Beijing to show you how polluted the air can yeah, be in yeah, China? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how that looked. It looked like yeah. that. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. That's horrible. Like the health advice, like the map that shows you how the air condition is, uh-huh. like was just blood red of non-healthy for the entire <laughs> western part of Washington. Which Jesus. doesn't doesn't really matter for you know late twenties early thirties boys like us right except you know, I'm I'm one of these wimpy asthmatic people so I start oh. coughing fit at the drop of a hat so yeah, every time I would go good. outside it would be just awful and I'd be coughing there for the entire day on top Dude. of that it's ninety five fucking degrees outside yeah. God, <laughs> that's damn it and the, one of the cool things is you know how they say nuclear winter killed the dinosaurs body blah, blah, blah because of the smoke we actually didn't get as hot as predicted because it helped reflect yeah. the sun so oh. good thing wildfires Very in canada cool. meant not too hot in seattle <laughs> <laughs> All right. so Ironic. the only thing left to do is to burn down the rest of british columbia and cool this place down just a bit more Yes, <laughs> it's, it's getting it's getting a little better right now. But I mean, another 10 degree dip, I'd be that'd be perfect. It's, <laughs> I'm sure they'd be willing to do that for us. Exactly. Yeah, totally. I mean, it's they're just nice people. They're Canadian. They're, it, they're friendly. It's nothing more than moose houses up there. So just burn a few they, moose houses and we're moose, fine. Moose houses. Have they sent you guys an yes. apology yet? <laughs> they should. <laughs> we're sorry for smoking up. Your we sky. would like to apologize for the smoky Seattle skies. <laughs> it's been <Our> bad. <laughs> It was just fucking weird because I've seen fog in Seattle. That that said, I haven't lived here a whole year, but I've seen fog in Seattle twice. And oh. I just look outside and it's noon and it's just this weird haze. And I was talking to my buddy who also just moved here very recently. Uh, and I said, you know what all this is, right? He said, yeah, it's heat haze. I said, no, no, that's smoke, dude. Canada's on fire. <laughs> oh, no, you should have <laughs> told him. Canada's on fire. It's he's new. You should have convinced him that there's a whole thing in the city where, like, the third oh, yeah. Thursday of the month, here. that everyone just gets stoned outside. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, like you've no. heard of 420, yeah? This is yeah, yeah. a much, much more serious yeah. situation. Seattle's got their own, their own 420. It's great. It's the entire <laughs> city just smokes it all up at once. We're going to hotbox Seattle as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> the ozone is our hotbox, you fuckers. Damn right. <laughs> Uh, wow. So more like the uh, never mind. More like the what? 
No, nah, we won't go there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been Seattle this week. Has anything yeah. fun been going on in the Cali, Ohio region? The Cali, Ohio uh, region. That's, a, yeah. that's, a, that's, that's no, no, two different regions. Two different zone. regions. I like that. It's a just, small region. Yeah. yeah, that's this big band all the way from California to Ohio. When you, when you think, yeah, Cal- yeah. Cal- what what has what's uh, what's common to California that we can Im- include in this region? Because we need to categorize things. By, it's super you know, flat. Oh yeah, Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Ohio. <laughs> Let's throw that in there. Not the anything Cali, else in Ohio. between. Just Ohio. <laughs> so you've yeah. got um, your skyline chili has got avocado slices on top of it. Yeah, there you go. That actually would probably be pretty good. I try. I can, it. I can get behind it. I'd, I'd try I'll it. it. What do you mean? Try, what do you mean? Try it. It sounds delicious. Chili? <laughs> you don't no, know. No, it's no, 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 no. You don't oh, know. Josh doesn't know. It's not chili. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. Here, here it is. Here, I got this. I got this. All right. You've done this before, by the way. Just yeah. Skyline chili is not chili. Like chili's got beans and onions and shit in it and meat. Right. Um. Skyline chili. Is the best meat slurry Cincinnati has to offer. Uh, okay, <laughs> it's cinnamon flavored meat slurry. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, oh, all right. It's uh, to be a little less. Uh, I don't know how to d- ex- exaggerate. Exaggerating, <laughs> sensationalizing. Um, yeah. it's Greek. It's like a Greek style chili, so it's got a little bit of cinnamon oh, and yeah. cloves. I think probably is a part of that. Kind of taste. It sounds amazing. In our but, uh, region, it's been deemed Cincinnati chili. You had things like Gold mm-hmm. Star and um, Skyline. And I think there's but another they, one. Basically, the entire menu is just a collection of things covered in that chili and cheese. <laughs> oh, so, okay. And it's one of the most underrated things in Skyline yeah. is the three way baked potato. And a three way is your base starch, which is usually spaghetti uh, mm. with your chili with cheese. But if you get the potato with it, that thing is a fucking meal. Like you will be full yeah. for days on a potato <laughs> three way. It's delicious. Oh, okay. okay. It's and well, also uh it's associated the same way as White Castle is as a hazard to your gastrointestinal tract. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. And also oh, a yes. lot of people think of it as a hangover cure. It's but, um, all right. And if they you have ever come crackers. out this way, we will we will venture to the, the nearest skyline. Okay. You can be like, oh, that doesn't really, this is weird. If uh, you're in the tri state <laughs> area, which for yeah. those not in the area, it's Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky. You have to go to a skyline. And if you can't go to its little like lesser counterpart known as Gold Star, but Skyline's where it's at. Mm. All so right. uh, that- if I if I well when I go back to Ohio, I'm going to live at a skyline chili. <laughs> oh, <Okay. Yeah. laughs> so um speaking of food, did you guys see the cooking with Babish that he did recently? I oh, did you know, know, with with Babish? Yeah, yeah, he did um and so what? Binging what with Babish. Binging, binging yeah. with Babish. Oh, sorry. Yeah, binging, whatever. But either way, he did uh, <laughs> Zelda Breath of the Wild, which was yeah, awesome. Saw that. That's really cool. That was really interesting. I didn't know that thing was an actual fruit. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> durian. Oh, you've never seen durian before. Yeah, it's like oh a giant God, pineapple. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, am I great? I mean, really entertaining to watch professional chefs have to cook with it. I've, I've watched tons of these cooking contests where someone's a prick and they're like oh hey by the way your secret ingredient is durian it's a fruit <laughs> that literally tastes like rotting garbage try to cook with it <laughs> well he made it sound like it tastes <laughs> good it just smells terrible yeah i have i've heard it described as like trash fruit trash <laughs> fruit <laughs> i thought he, he described it in the video as like when you put out a match right yeah, yeah. smoky yeah. sulfury whatever that's what he said. That was a really, that was a really good episode. Those have yeah. been really good lately. I actually plan yeah. on cooking that rice dish tomorrow. I think I've watched every video on that channel like three or four times minimum. Agreed. <laughs> now, Agreed. question is, how many things have you cooked that he's? I have cooked one. Oh yeah, what'd you really? Cook? Milk that steak? pasta, pasta alio olio or however you. Oh right, it. yeah. Pasta it's aioli. actually, yeah. I've actually got all the ingredients in my fridge. I was going to make it this weekend. Uh, nice. nice. It's so it's so good and it's real easy. That sounds pretty. I'm gonna good. have to do that. Probably, Probably you, you know, you know, he does have uh, like if you go to the YouTube, they have easy, medium, and hard. Yeah, as far as the, the difficulty. Yeah, yeah it's it's all yeah, they're really like sure. categorized. Mm-hmm. So like if you want to like just br- like you know blitz through the easy stuff, just like mm-hmm. start making. Most of them are easy. I think there's another categorization yeah. of uh, like number of ingredients or difficulty or not difficulty, but uh, prep complexity. 
I don't know if it's uh, price, like, mm. or just oh. complexity as in how many ingredients. He put out a cookbook do, like, recently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe we should. Say- and we also have a YouTube channel. You check that out. Let's get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna go check no, him out, plug it, plug it. Yeah, we're plugging somebody else. Yeah, it's like it's, it it's in. seventy-two <laughs> pin connector. Go, go, subscribe, smash, yeah. destroy like those a, like uh, buttons. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Camera on. <laughs> ruin them. Ah, uh, well. Right. That said, you guys been playing much games this week? Well, oh, yeah. before then, before then, I'm going to totally, oh. totally not deviate from 72 Food Connector. There's something we oh, got to yeah. talk about. Irk, okay. Irk, come on. Come on how, how could you forget? Yeah, we, we had some beer. Stout. Campfire Stout. Campfire uh, Stout. By, by High Water Brewing out of California. Uh, it's a 6.5% beer, of course, stout style. Um, the last time I had a technical like what was referred to as a campfire or a fireplace stout it literally tasted like ashes it was not a good experience i did not have high hopes for this but you take a sip and the first thing that hits your palate is marshmallow toasted marshmallow oh it's a freshly toasted not blackened not burnt but just a toasty fucking marshmallow that finishes nice. out with this beautiful sweet smoky aftertaste it is by far one of the best beers I have ever had. That sounds really good. It's yeah, delicious. Right it, we, so I, we tried I like 12 different beers last night, and that was the best. It really was. It really yeah. was. There was um, Pineapple Mana from a brewery out of Hawaii. That was fucking weird. It had so much potential, but it had a really weird upfront taste. The aftertaste was okay, but mm-hmm. I don't know. It was yeah, yeah, but <laughs> High water brewing, campfire stout, go find it. It is fucking delicious. I wonder if anywhere has that around here. I don't know. Not, I need to find it around here. Ship you some be, uh, if we can find <laughs> it near us, I will, I'll ship near it to us. you. In the California, Ohio region. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you guys have it, I should have it, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, That's how that works. In the, uh, in the Florida, Florida, Washington region. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, God, somewhere, so. somewhere in there, in that. <laughs> yeah, video games though. Yeah, Those yeah, yeah. Cool, uh, right? I mean, we we play some, right? I mean, we we do yeah. that occasionally. Yeah, in between in between bites, I do indeed video games. <laughs> like, um, Only for example, you you guys kind of do some Dark Souls three still, right? I mean, oh god, uh, heard we, yeah, did. Uh, we did. It was it was kind of sad this time though. Sad it was why sad? Uh, so. We're we're trying to get the way I've got it set up on my machine is I'm just recording. I'm not streaming. I'm recording at 1080p, 60 frames per second. It the video is beautiful. It's mm. 60 gigs per like two hours, but it's <laughs> fucking beautiful. So I'm like, Josh, we can do this. You're you're yeah. we can do it, man. I believe in you. Except I think we used the wrong encoder. We were actually encoding stuff instead of using the NVIDIA encoder that OBS has, which just strips frames right. off of a video card. Mm. Um so the stream ended up going at maybe 20 on a good day frames Ooh, per second. But that good. happened at like 15 minutes in. So we're looking at it. It looks great. So we keep playing and the stream just became completely unwatchable. So oh. now we've got to take Josh's audio and my video and cut those together mm. and make our day two YouTube video, which hopefully, hopefully should be out soon. Yeah. And, uh, other than that, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, it was great! Nice. Like we figured out how to get each other in quicker. We fought mm-hmm. some bad guys, and we did a little less shit. It was fantastic. I'm still completely <laughs> met trash at the. We did meet a puppy. It was adorable so, and very oh, cold. Nice. So I gotta ask: Is this an actual puppy, or is this Tom? It's a three story Wait. wolf with a sword well, puppy. Yeah, we had this conversation a, with the first Dark Souls. They, you they call it a puppy. <laughs> they call it a dog. It's really like it is a human ish thing on all it's, fours that has a mace and uh, armored and yeah. shoots and shoots frost breath yeah it, it was pretty nice it, it's it a was puppy fun. you know it's, totally puppy like i i'm assuming this is going to be one of the easiest bosses we're gonna fight because mm-hmm. i had a hard time with it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right <laughs> uh, it was fantastic uh, yeah it was really fun it was a really cool like a, a lot of the time i spent like fighting it i was just like looking at it and like looking yeah. at like all of its cool movements because like the one thing i really love about dark souls is it does have like really 
really interesting animation like how things mm-hmm. move they really like pay attention to it and and like the premeditation of all the attacks and actions was always like really like spot on it was mm-hmm. always amazing i loved that especially from like one to this one mm-hmm. and they didn't miss a beat it's really good so you guys but are like figuring just, out how to get everything flowing better with the two people on it uh yeah well it really it's just about the embers <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so we we did stumble upon an area where we got a bunch of embers each which was extremely helpful um but we also realized at least i realized halfway through hey when you come in as a ghost you get half the estus and estus and dark souls is your magic health potion that refills your your vitality yeah sunny Um, d man yeah your your sunny d (laughs) so i i didn't realize that so i get into this boss battle we're ready i'm like holy shit i've got two estus what the fuck man and josh is like yeah that's just how it works like oh my god no (laughs) yeah we we have to figure out strategies to um, we've got normal enemies down where one of us will anti- antagonize them and the other one will backstab them. But mm-hmm. with bosses, there's a whole lot of trying to figure out their patterns and, and get them to chase one person while the other's healing. It's really cool. It's a nice dynamic. Yeah, it's, it works really, really good on Tom's run and really, mm-hmm. really shitty on my run. <laughs> like, <laughs> on Tom's run, it's like, like you're like, okay, I'm attacking him. And I'm like, okay, great. And then he turns around and comes after you. I run over and I kind of like there's like this little tug of war thing going back and forth then he dies it's great but like on mine when we because we have to go through each boss twice in order to like you know keep pace with each other on mine is just like like he learned he's like oh i'm gonna fall for that trick twice yes. <laughs> yeah <laughs> like screw and you he just kids. like st- just stuck on tom and killed tom and came over and killed me i'm like oh dude like <laughs> it's not fair <laughs> but yeah we've souls. We've got to we've got to beat that boss, and hopefully we'll find time to do that shortly. But not tonight, because tonight, after the podcast, is our Grand Theft Auto Five post stream. Uh, so everyone can jump into our Discord. We'll hit you up with links after the show. Well, just to like jump around a little bit, talking about Dark Souls, <laughs> Adam, Adam, you're taking a step back here. You're did, you're, yeah. you're going back in time to the good old days. Yeah, I'm dodge rolling uh, back into the first Dark Souls. And this is all, not only the first Dark Souls; it is my first Dark Souls. Oh, you started really? on oh, the best wait, one. Wait, wait, this is this is your first Dark Souls. Yes. Oh, I was under the impression you played them before. No, no, uh, no. Oh, no, no, no. You're in for a treat, my friend. No, actually, it's um, it's the first Dark Souls. I am I'm playing it on my PS3, which is not probably the way right. God meant it to be played. But the reason I'm playing it on my PS3 is because I bought Dark Souls the same year it released on the PS3 when that was new. Oh, and wow. I played maybe 20 minutes of it and was like, oh, this game kind of controls bad and it's hard, so I'm not going to do this. <laughs> Fast forward. <laughs> Fast forward some years. I've grown more mature and... <laughs> Oh wow! I don't, have realized oh, I'm, don't more, do that. I'm more, a more seasoned gamer. I am not. Mm, the I have a refined I was palate. Back then. No, 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 no. But back, I, I, uh, I didn't play the same kind of games back then that I do now necessarily. So right. I think I can appreciate it a little more now, and I am actually appreciating it, appreciating it a lot. I'm having a lot of, I'm uh, having a good time with it in a Dark Souls punishing masochistic kind of way it's it's yeah, hard to it. call dark souls fun because you get in and it's this depressing world and you know the world doesn't give a shit if you live or die and you're constantly fighting against the odds but you prevail after dying like 17 times it's it's yeah. progress it's progress at its finest right like like you you try really hard you suck you just get eviscerated by like the lowest of low right yeah. and then every time like you beat that guy you get better at that guy and then you fight them again you fight three of them and you get better and better and better and you've been like taking your beatings but like you know you're you're progressing you don't really get that that level of play from all games you know sometimes the collectathon but it's super easy you're not like improving at something and with dark souls it's like every step you take you improve a little bit in a different Mm -hmm. way and it's it's great. It's, uh, and, the, and with every step you take, the game pushes back just as hard. Yes. You know, you start the game up, you're like, oh, I'm going to play some video games. Let's play some Dark Souls. And Dark Souls is like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and then it starts throwing things at you and you have to deal with it all. 
and until you eventually decide that's enough for the night. Let's do right. something that <laughs> it's more fun. But <laughs> soon as it senses you're starting to enjoy yourself, it's like yeah. nope. <laughs> no, it's just every and it's really nuanced. You can tell they put so much time into figuring out exactly how much it's going to mess with you and how it's going to mess with you, and it's just like relentless. And, and but it's cool. Like there's it's there's an appeal to that somehow. Right. It's it's not babying. It's not holding your hand. Yeah. And it's it's everything as far as the way it controls, which is very slow and kind of heavy feeling. It's um, plotting. I, I, yeah. Right. I actually sent them a like a little video clip of me hitting the button on the controller and then also videotaping the screen like hey is am i getting like weird input lag or is this how it's supposed to be <laughs> because uh, when you hit the button to attack it's it's not when you start swinging it's it's the the, the whole action like, yeah right you hit the button and then he back swings and then he swings so you have to like learn that timing right and um but it's just the difficulty of the game is punishing but there's so many levels to it it's not just everything has a lot of health or everything hits you really heavy. It's the, there's, there's such a, all the timing is so calculated. There's so many enemies that will hit you and you barely, like if you miss your small little window to dodge out of the way, they will hit you again. It's timed perfectly to where Mm -hmm. it's hard to get out of that once you get stuck into it. And then half of the enemies, when you use your flask to heal, Half of them will just start rushing you as soon as you hit that button to heal. They will just rush you mm. and and likely hit you if you're not far away, enough away. <laughs> yeah. And then once they hit you, then you're down on the ground and they can hit you again. And it's just it steamrolls from there. So it's like every little mistake you make, the game says, "Hey, that was a mistake. <laughs> Fuck you." Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> then you have to not do that again. You know. But it's it's really rewarding to play through. It's very like. Oh, I just want to, you know, I want to try this one more time before I go to bed. I'll I'll run through this little area one more time and try it again because it's it's kind of addicting in that way. Right. I think I think the one thing I think the absolute uh, worst thing about Dark Souls though is the first one's always going to be the best one. Mm, yeah, it, you've, you've it, talked about that before uh, a little it, bit. A, a lot, and it, it's but it's really just because you get good at it and when you circle back through and you play it like you'll you might play this game through if you really like it uh, you might play through it like three like maybe three times with mm-hmm. different builds maybe a heavy build maybe a magic build maybe a quality build you know and mm-hmm. and then you'll play through it and you're like oh that was cool that was amazing but then you'll go back through like the next game but you already kind of know how enemies move and so you'll mm-hmm. like you'll like be a little reserved when you go around corners and you're like okay mm-hmm. there's a guy there like Let's see what goes down, and yeah, and, and you just kind of walk through it. the The unique thing that, like, I think me and Tom are experiencing is it's been so long. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know? it's so, not like riding a bike. You no, definitely. it's not. <laughs> and, and like, there, I guess there, there is definitely a de- like your skill goes down. <laughs> mm-hmm. It does over time. So, like, if you go, if you go from this one and you go into two, one's going to be better. If you go from two directly into three, I'm s- assuming one's going to be better. Mm-hmm. for you you know so, <laughs> that's fair it's it's I've, akin to go ahead uh, i've got i've got a question for you yeah out of out of the bosses you face out of the areas you've gotten to what was the most frustrating boss that you eventually conquered or or actually where are you stuck now i'm actually not even very far at all into the game whatsoever i fought a total of two actual bosses so um the beginning of dark souls 1 um, just that that ramp up to kind of get yourself into the Dark Souls mindset to to get your first taste of get good mm-hmm. is definitely the longest part of the game. You'll probably spend ten hours in just the little beginning areas trying to ring the first bell and making your way to the second before you get on a roll and start making real substantial progress. Yeah, that's fair. Well, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Yeah. Always fucking <laughs> I don't Dark harp, Souls. I don't want to harp too much on this. So, so yeah, actually, I don't want you to harp too much on because there's something I want to ask you about because I haven't been able to play it yet. Yeah. PUBG first-person servers. Yes. Ooh. How are those? It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. There's, I agree. There's, uh, it's more, 
I want to say fair because technically it's always fair, but there's not that hiding around a corner and seeing everything around you thing. You know, it's, it's, it's a lot harder to ambush people. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have to pay attention to your positioning a lot more with the circle and all that kind of stuff, but it kind of, it just feels more, uh, there's more anxiety because you don't have the visibility you have in third person servers. Right. So but, how yeah. does how does the driving feel? How do vehicles feel from first person? Because I haven't tried this yet. Uh, it's scary because it's it, there's a lot less visibility. So you know if you go flying off of a hill and you do some flips, you know you're gonna s- <laughs> not be able to tell where you are when you land right away. It's not it's not like a first person racing game. <laughs> yeah, because no. the the roads aren't flat and you're not going like yeah. on the flat roads. You're yeah. just jamming through the countryside bouncing off of whatever you hit yeah (laughs) and so that like you're like and then like you like fly up your camera's doing all this crazy crap right and but it's 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 not so bad but i like that about it i like that about it it's uh it kind of makes the vehicles i don't want to say more risky to use but they really are uh, more difficult to use so when you need to how's the camera shake because I know first person, uh, you have to do something to not just fix the camera to the person because you'll get a lot of bounce and random shit that makes it really awkward. Uh, I didn't oh, know you could no. change that. Is it pretty smooth? No, no, no. It's not necessarily we change it. The developers, you make it to where oh. the camera box itself doesn't necessarily lock to a fixed point on the player because then mm-hmm. as the player steps and stuff and goes up and down while they just run it'll bounce up and down and possibly give oh, them like motion yeah. sickness. Oh, there's, not, there's not a bunch oh, no. of bounce. No, it it's, seems it, it feels fine. It feels pretty smooth. Cause I know there was a little bit of bounce when you initially went first person, when the game first came out. So I'm was assuming oh. they did some stuff to tweak it. If they were going to have first person only. Yeah. That, I mean, they're playing with it a lot. Initially, like they had all sorts of weird stuff. Like there was this crazy, like, when you tried to pick stuff up off the ground, there was like an animation. It went through the entire animation. Now I don't know if that was like lag or if that's just how it was, mm-hmm. but it went through like the whole animation. I'm like, okay, we got this thing. Let's put it right here. Oh, another thing. All right. Then it, you know, that's what it. That's Ooh, what it, candy. That's Ooh, what it. Candy. That's what it felt like. It was. It was really dry and slow, and it mm-hmm. kind of took away from like the. It's like you run into a room like, oh, I need a gun. I need a gun. Okay. Uh, there's one. Wheat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <the ammo. laughs> all right ammo. okay all right can we can we mod pub g to have josh do voiceovers whenever you pick something up i would play so much more of that if that were the case so, oh, yeah. oh, hey cool yeah. i found a sniper oh hang on let me just grab this all right i'm gonna put it in my pocket now okay i got it good all right yeah that's exactly right <laughs> that's what it felt like but they got rid of that so you can you, mm-hmm. it doesn't disrupt the flow now you can like run in tab over your like, oh, and it just jam on you know mm-hmm so it's it's nice um it's nice that they didn't like change the game that much but the first person really does at a level play that you know if you're bad you're gonna get crushed like it it really caters more towards like the really good players so i get shit on a lot (laughs) because basically it's like in order for you to kill that guy you have to pop look at him acquire the target and then lock to the target and then fire your gun right And mm-hmm. all of those things, a really good player is going to do faster and more effective yeah. than you will. And when the when the end circle closes in and it closes in on a wheat field, you don't have the everybody go prone in the wheat field because if you go prone in the wheat field, you can't see anything at all, nothing, right. absolutely nothing. So it makes it to where you have to get up, and it, I think it makes the end game move a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. That's nice. I right. actually I got some PUBG in this week, just uh, a couple games. Um, and I decided to go full solo. Uh, so nice. the, the first game I jumped into, it's, you know, I dropped middle of a town, grabbed some guns, died almost immediately. It's like in the top, I don't know, 10 players to have died. And it was, it was great. It was, I sucked. It was awesome. Um, in the second game though, I did the same thing. I, because we've all decided collectively that we should start playing aggressive. Mm-hmm. I jump into this town and start grabbing gear. I kill a dude. And I'm mm-hmm. running through this town trying to find people. I'm just like, I'm hunting. I'm going to murder everything I see. <laughs> there's fucking no one. There's oh, nobody. No. I search this town and then I walk over to Pochinki and there's fucking no one there either. 
like the whole the whole game is just empty. I made it to like the top the top thirty, I think, mm. before I just found another person. I don't yeah. know where everyone was, but I'm playing aggressively, and the game's like, hold on, Tom. You should camp like everyone else because <laughs> there's no one here. There's I always was in the middle of the circle. There's that always happened. been a PUBG like sense to me where whenever I try to play conservative, I hear shit, I see shit all the time. As soon right. as I tell mm-hmm. myself, you know what, I need to get better at gunplay, I'm going aggressive. Yeah. I'll drop into right. Pachinki. Let's and drop see Pachinki. No one. <laughs> Nobody's there. <laughs> it usually happens. It happens the most often when like you have friends and they're playing, and you're like, and you're like, all right, well they're almost done. They have like 40 left. Let's just do it. Let's just do a freaking do a yellow run. run. Yeah. And let's just go in there, guns blazing, and like just go for like the craziest three sixty no scopes, right? And you're like, all right, we're dropping military. Like <laughs> like the dark circle and dark souls. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they want more dark souls. Okay. Can, I, can I, I think everyone can I mute ever. him? Can I yeah, mute yeah. him? Uh, yeah, you give yeah. permission to mute Tom. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> You've been banned from podcast for 20 no, seconds. But no, the last time that I tried to do a big, like, aggressive run, um, I was playing by myself, and Josh talked me into playing with him and his wife and Noodles, and the idea was, okay, mm-hmm. we'll all play aggressive. We're like, hey, we got four people playing aggressive. This is going to be a shit show. It's going to be fun. We did not right. see anyone until there was less than 20 people left with right. four of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, that's, that's the worst thing. I think that's the worst thing about the update, though, is that there is no four-player first-person servers. There is. You can only do two. I, you can only do twos and ones. Yep. And so they they're testing it with twos and ones, and they're moving on to squad after that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, I think it, it is planned. We, should, we need to play some twos first-person sometime. Yeah. Twos? Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. It's it's but it's pretty fun. I'm liking first-person more than third-person. I think. Yeah, I yeah, agree. That's it, I've been it, looking it forward to have, it. It doesn't have as much like random BS, but I, I've been really liking it. No corner peaks, motherfuckers. Alt button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will find yeah. a way. You gotta use that Q and E. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I know Tom's been playing some of a real shooter, you know, not this PUBG bullshit. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. A real shooter. Well, actually hey, he's, hey, he's hey, gonna go real some, shooter. He, he's gonna go somewhere else than I would on this, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um yeah, I've actually I've been playing some CSGO recently. Um Yeah, he took it somewhere me, else. Oh, <laughs> oh what, what were you oh wait, you're talking about the competitive esport that I've been playing. Uh Splatoon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. but either, either way, right. go, go about let's, CSGO. Let's take it, it'd be serious. <laughs> okay. You, you you talk about the bullshit shooter first and I'll I'll handle the real shooter talk. Okay, all right, okay. Uh, so yeah. I was playing this tiny little known um wants to be an esport but totally isn't shooter counter-strike global offensive uh, which like <laughs> only six people in the world play yeah um right. and i i suck i decided to stream it and i sucked even worse than usual which is pretty <laughs> impressive but right. we had fun we were we were hanging out we were chatting in discord csgo i don't play it competitively i play it like i've always played counter-strike get in and die a lot and just have a good time mm-hmm. um and it was it was fun. It's a good chill out game. I, I love CSGO. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna hope to stream more of that this week. Um and by the way, fuck the op and fuck anyone who uses it. <laughs> yeah. You got op. There's, no to, uh, there's no better way to chill out than shooting people with guns. Right? Right? Yeah. It's great. Violence always just <laughs> levels me out, you know. Yeah. It really takes the edge <laughs> off. Just <laughs> unnecessary murder. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, me uh me and RS went uh went full demolition and i i didn't realize this there's so you're breaking into this bank right you got to plant a bomb or defuse a bomb depending on which side you're on we get into this bank and there's a, a safe with the door open where you have to plant and blow up all the money or something i don't know terrorism doesn't make sense um <laughs> i didn't realize it you can jump there's like this little space between the door and the wall the open door outside of the vault where you can plant the bomb so the bomb was planted and i was like it's not in here. It's dinging and it's not in here. Where the fuck is this? Apparently that's the new meta for that stage is you plant in this little space. So you have to jump over like a potted plant or something to get to where the bomb is. And by oh, doing wow. that, you really expose yourself. There's literally nowhere to run. You're in a tiny little box. Oh, crazy. Um, yeah. So I guess the game has still gotten evolving meta, even with maps that have been there since day one. It's, it's kind of, kind of nuts. Neat. 
Also, Dust 2 forever. <laughs> Everybody says that. Everyone loves but, it. Uh, but, Irk, I don't know. <laughs> what's, what's this hardcore esports that you've been playing a lot of and I've been playing a very small amount of? <laughs> okay, so I know that you guys probably talked a little a little bit about it, but I've gotten pretty. Mm. I don't want to say deep. That's not the right word for it. But I've played a fuck ton of Splatoon. I've made the rank that I've needed to. I've partnered up with our buddy Vospec and was playing some league. I've gotten to the top tier on the Splatfest, and I've got to say this game is fucking awesome. This nice. game is really fucking fun. So if, <laughs> if you only like hyper-realistic shooters, you're not necessarily going to like it. You can't come into it thinking this. This is right. a class-based shooter through and through. And literally your class changes by whatever gun you choose. By mm. choosing one gun, you, you get like two different classes or three different classes you get from one gun. But it is just so much fucking fun. Um, so something I've realized, you play this intro turf war, and it's just cover the ground, whoever has the most percentage wins. Simple. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, killing is, it helps, but it's not the main thing. You get into rank, and that's when you start to see the real shit. So they have three oh, yeah. modes. They have a king of the hill, mm -hmm. where there's like a stationary thing in the very center. Whoever controls that, part of their timer ticks down until you reach zero. So everyone is fighting over the central territory. The entire okay. fucking match. And you have a couple classes that don't paint very well. They don't lay paint, but they are one hit kills. They're sniper rifles. So every once in a while, you'll be in there just driving around and just like throwing ink everywhere. Like, yeah, I'm doing really good. And all of a sudden, the sniper gets on a fucking perch and it's the end of your goddamn world because you realize <laughs> everyone, everyone on your team is laid for just laying down paint and you have no one that's anti personnel. And you just get thrashed because you can't stay alive. Wow. And it's insane. That sounds frustrating. It's insane because, you know, I play rank, I do pretty good. As soon as you get to league, these people are fucking legit. I've yet, <laughs> I, I've qualified, like I've played enough matches to qualify. I won mm -hmm. one out of like 15 matches in league so far. Jesus. It is brutal. Damn, and, um, they know that like the metas are all already there. He's just going yep. over here. Yeah, they yeah, watch like some random YouTube video and someone says, oh, well, if you wiggle your control stick left to right and then right to left, you go faster. <laughs> you know, it's like some bullshit yeah. meadows like that that come yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, d Laz <laughs> was telling me that um, I guess the high end pro players are using motion controls. On that. Oh, so, really? really? Yeah, that's that, that blows huh, my mind. Why? Why, mo why motion? Okay. controls? I don't know. So the old I've heard the most I've heard the motion controls for the uh, the old one were actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they well, were. And the very first beta they released it was. It was a lot like Zelda's motion controls where you do the dual thumbstick and then you can use motion to fine tune. But mm -hmm. now motion is only up and down. So you have to go left and right with the joystick and then motion up and down, which is just so fucking awkward. You you can turn that off. So you can make it full motion if you wanted to. Hmm. Where I hmm. couldn't find the setting. In, in the options i don't have my switch near me but yeah it's it's in the options you can do left and right motion controls as well okay that that, that would definitely okay. help but still it's one of those things where it i don't see how i don't see how they're doing it but i do want to give a little update uh splat fest um platoon every once in a while will have something they call a splat fest they'll try to divide their player base in two they'll ask you which do you like more this or that for this splat fest it's ketchup or mayonnaise which do you like more Ooh. And what happens is whatever team you choose, you tr they try to always match you against the other. And it's just head to head. You gain experience just in this mode. And if you get a certain mm -hmm. height, you get a, um, like, uh, I can't remember what they're called. You get shit that'll boost you for your items and shit. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep playing and playing and playing to get there. The issue is these last two ones, the one they did in the beta and this, are so one-sided that you don't play against mayonnaise much because everyone chose ketchup because of mayonnaise sauce. i was gonna that, i was gonna yeah. bring that up because they had the same kind of issue with cake and ice cream because yeah ice, ice cream is vastly superior to cake it is, <laughs> it is. I, when you said ketchup and mayo i'm like what really who's gonna i mean how many people you are gonna be like on the a, mayo team you you like like ketchup, and or... ketchup and mustard would have made a lot more sense yes yeah, yeah, yes it would have um, See, the, the Splatfest this year, whoever's managing them, like in Splatoon 1, the Splatfests were mostly okay and not really one sided. But in Splatoon 2, they've been very, very one sided. Like cake and ice cream was bad, but it wasn't that bad. 
ketchup and mayo. Come on, guys. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh what, what do you want? Medi- medium rare cooked steaks or dog shit? Um, hmm. <laughs> Damn. I can see I'll take the dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can make some pretty good tasting mayo. You and, have to, um, okay. Veggie man is asking. <laughs> say, Veggie Man's asking about the solid dress it. So, um, I've tried to use the comms and shit. I will say this right now: the ability to play with players is bullshit. Right now, you have to, fucking so in, shit. Un, in unranked mode, you have to join off of someone to be able to play unranked together. And by doing that, you don't get to use their internal comm system. To use their internal comm system, you have to start a lobby. Invite your friend, and it's really nice. This part is it notifies them on their phone. Hey, you were invited into this, and then you jump in on the phone together. I've yet to get this to work because you have to actually fill out an entire party to play through this. You can't go into matchmaking like that. No, it is okay. only for private parties. So unless you have eight mm. fucking people you're playing with, it's worthless. I really it, like if Nintendo were to take what fucking GameSpy did back in the day and try to just carbon copy fucking GameSpy, that would be perfect. That would be good enough, right? It, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the best, but it would be good enough and it would be passable. But I don't know why Nintendo is even trying at this point. Yeah, it's going off the phone is a novel idea that could do some really cool shit. They are just generally fucking their matchmaking up. Even if they don't have the voice comms, you can't party up and play together. There's only, so let me finish this out real quick. Unranked mode, you can join off your teammates or join off your friends and then you'll randomly play against them or play with them. If you need to change your weapon, you have to back out and hope you get back in before the match starts. Other words, you have to wait for their match to end before it puts you in their party. And that's only if someone leaves, which normally they do. But you have that risk. You might wait six minutes until you can actually play with them. It's three minute matches. Mm. Ranked. You cannot join on your teammate at all. There are um, friend, friends at all. You are playing lame. purely solo on ranked. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I feel. I feel like. Get it. Like like especially if you want like a pro scene, right? Like mm-hmm. if you can't group up as a team and play ranked together, that well, just. Well, so, so There's imagine, thing, imagine if quick. you ranked is not the top competitive mode in this game. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's What's league. The top There's, le- There's league play, and league play does matchmaking kind of right. You can party okay. up as twos or fours, and if you go as and twos, then, it'll match you with another team of two, and then you'll go against a team of four or two. Is that a, is there a ladder or a two and two? Uh, it's MMR. Is there a ladder and rank? It's MMR so based it's, on. Uh, it's MMR based on league. And it's, um, I guess it's like a get, hit, hit. Like, do you get a rank? Um, and both you do. You get MMR, which is an actual, like, here, oh, is your, okay. here is your value in league. And on rank play, you get start at C minus, then C, then C plus, B minus, B, B plus, blah, 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 all the way up. Okay. Mm. So it's. I, so if any other game, like if Dota or CS or PUBG, were to put out an online matchmaking system that looked like this in any way, they would be laughed off of the fucking internet. <laughs> well, yeah, and Nintendo kind of gets this like buy with a lot of stuff. They can, they can, they kind of uh, fuck up a little bit. The it's Nintendo just, market is completely different than the market of all those other games you listed. Yeah, yeah but they, it's I mean, not, they want, they want this game to be like a big esport. Like when they advertise this game, they show it in a stadium with a bunch of people and teams and yeah. they're all practicing on a chalkboard. The, they did that yeah, like they, before the switch ever like well, got on, like when it got unveiled. They, that they was, should do here's that. why though, because for an esports scene, it does work like that because as uh Vospec just pointed out, the ma- the party systems are designed for private lobbies. They're designed for local, which is what mm-hmm. you end up doing in esports. And I guess over in Japan, this game's selling like hotcakes. For a short term, or I don't even know if it may still be, but it was out selling um, Zelda for a while. The game is selling so strong over there. So so they are doing a lot of local matchmaking on that side. So that game is made for them when it comes to that aspect. I want to recreate the Splatoon commercial, but in reality, like sit a bunch of randos in a stadium, give them all switches with Splatoon and say, hey, go try to play as a team. 
and right. just watch the madness. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a that's a really good point. Like it, it, even if you even if not randos, like even if you wanted to get some, you know, pro players that haven't played Splatoon yet, like pro like pro other game players, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So so you take EG and you take OG from Dota and you say, "Hey guys, you're going to do competitive Splatoon during the match downtime. Um Go try to link up together. See what happens. <laughs> I, I just think like the just like matchmaking together in a ladder is something that you would do for a competitive game. Yeah, it just and, makes sense. And mm-hmm. they have it. They do in the league play. They do. And that is okay. their top tier. It's just they don't have it anywhere else. And that I agree with you. That blows my mind. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that seems strange. But that's okay. It is what it is. I mean, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure there'll be enough outcry in one way or another where you're they're gonna they're gonna have to do something like i don't just just like they put out that uh great great metroid game oh wait they haven't yet never mind (laughs) that's a full game versus a patch (laughs) that's doesn't do fucking anything the matchmaking will be fixed in splatoon 4 when you've got to buy the switch light ds with knuckles (laughs) good point So there's also one other thing I want to call out. I don't know if it was discussed last week. So when you start Splatoon, they do something really unique. They have this idea of these radio DJs that are going to introduce to you what's happening currently. So in Splatoon, every two hours, the maps rotate. There's only two maps in play per playlist at a time. Every two hours, it rotates. So when you jump on the game for the first time, they tell you, Here's the turf war maps. Here's the ranked maps. Here's the league maps. Oh, salmon runs currently going on. Here's what's going on. So it's like a news flash they give you every time you intro. What's pissing a lot of people off is you can't skip it. So if you like it, yeah, you got it. If you don't like it, you have to sit there for a minute and wait I just, until you can play. I just want to hit plus. That's all they want to do. I don't care where the match is. I just want to hit plus and play the goddamn game. It's but nice. now I'm sitting there jamming A. <laughs> so <laughs> the one thing I reason I like it is there's this game mode called Salmon Run that isn't active all the time. It's their horde mode, pretty much. It's got some other oh, shit okay. to it, but it's their horde mode. It's only active certain times, and you get special rewards through it. That news flash lets you know when it's active. Hmm. But... It's, I understand it's frustrating. It's not needed and it stalls you out. I like it, but I understand a fuck ton of people don't. But hmm. it is what it is. Regardless, the game seems really cool and a lot yeah, of people are enjoying it. Yeah, so. there, it's got a lot Match of flaws. Aside. Yeah, it's got a lot of flaws, but the game is ungodly fun and addicting. Speaking and of. That's, that's what pisses me off. <laughs> if it was a bad game, no one would care. <laughs> no, it's a really good game that if they had all the stuff in place, it'd be fantastic. Right. But also, speaking of newer games, um, I wasn't here last week to really hear much about it, and I think Josh has a little bit more information on Fortnite now that he's had a lot more time on it. Yeah, I mean, now that I've actually played it for more than 10 minutes, <laughs> uh, going into it initially, like it's it pretty straightforward, and when I went to like it didn't seem like all that much but when you go into a couple levels deep like a few like challenges deep they start to open up these like skill trees for you they start to open up all of these different options for like kind of character building i guess in a way so there's apparently now from what i can tell there's four skill trees that you can go through all with their own like crazy unique things on each one there's a ass load of quests and just a ridiculous amount of things to collect and gather Mm -hmm. it seems like this game is pretty massive i don't i don't know why it's early access and that's my biggest question is like for for the this title it it seems a little strange like it seems like a full featured totally like there's a few glitches here and there, but nothing like mm-hmm. outlandish, right? But it's a fully featured game. I don't know why it's in, like in early access at all. I know that their plan for release is to make it free to play. Mm-hmm. So I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, I don't understand that high of a paywall, or not. I don't want to say paywall necessarily, but like there's a lot of money being thrown for a game that's early access, and like you said, you don't have to pay if you wait. Right. 
is well, this like a cash grab by the devs or that's what it i'm wondering might be. If it's it might be like and, I, and it might be because it's it's very it has a whole bunch of twitch integration in it there's a ton mm. of twitch integration in it there's a bunch of different like ways that you can like it as a uh and i'll be doing these too um for anyone that actually does pick it up you can actually as uh as a like a twitch streamer you can set up missions for other people to do oh you can like create missions for uh for your subscribers to to try and take on and it shows you up on this top like their name every time they finish the mission and it's really cool but it's just really strange i just don't know why i really don't know why it's early access um, and uh but uh, overall like i got to the point where so now i'm like upgrading walls the bases are looking great there's all sorts of cool traps and guns and and it's just as there seems to be a, a variety of ways to play it i've been to a whole bunch of different locations and they're all fairly unique um and like the missions are pretty straightforward but like they keep adding a new level to each one like there's a new a new monster that you have to fight a new this or a new that a new way to handle this situation a new like mini game type thing to deal with so like and i keep doing that consistently and it seems like there's a lot more game to be had so what i'm wondering is if at one point i'm going to hit this thing and there's just gonna be so much open to me to do that it's just going to become like an overwhelming mess yeah so Um, i got faith i mean i've watched you play it a little bit but it's coming Mm -hmm. out of epic so I have a lot of faith that they will hammer it down because I mean the horde modes and gears were low, mm-hmm. right? I mean I people mean, love this stuff, and I know that they're going to put the resources to get it right. Well, I hope. And I mean, so far it's great. It. Like they were like playing through. It's cool. Like in the very beginning, we were just like shooting the guys, like shooting the bad guys, and and like and then our, we started realizing there's all these cool traps you can build and you can build like this crazy complex of traps where like the monsters don't even get to you you don't even have to shoot them you can just <laughs> wait but like the waves get bigger and bigger and they get closer and closer and they get through those traps eventually mm-hmm. so like you you know you have to deal with them so like what i'm what i'm hoping is that they become the hordes that come after you are unreasonably large like mm-hmm. just unreasonably huge and then you have to have traps and you have to have the best weapons in order to just survive Mm -hmm. so far we haven't really had a hard time surviving with like the four people me uh rs my wife and uh dave like we've pretty much got through every mission fairly unscathed Uh, i don't think we've failed a mission um we've done kind of less than optimal (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah but it's uh it's good it's it's really good so far I, I, the inventory system does kind of suck there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of crap you start collecting like all sorts of garbage and then you have like this giant collection book with all sorts of garbage in it that you can kind of put things in mm-hmm. but you just end up with a giant mess of an inventory <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so with with the price you paid do you feel ripped off by that do you feel like if you Not- would have waited it would have been fine no not even i don't feel ripped off at all okay. mainly mainly because it's 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 a full game like that's that's the biggest thing i've paid i paid more for less okay you know right. like i've i've i was there for the whole uh initial craze of indie games and and i i i, I you know i took the risk with some of the you know really crappy titles and it not paying off you know i've paid into like you know early access titles and then like them never updating it and then literally just disappearing (laughs) you know like like i I, we got this game we're all playing it it's there's almost too much to do Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah that's that's a good problem to have though (laughs) and i don't and i don't and i don't see i don't see me running into the thing the only thing that like like i guess i guess kind of bothers me about it is that i don't know why it's early access you know I, that's like yeah, uh, that's the only that, part that's the that only might part be that them trying to make some money on it initially they might yes. be and that's uh, and that's a reasonable move you know as a developer um i mean mm-hmm. early access is the way to go and you look really good because he's they're like oh look early access you know maybe they'll add a new hero that's all they have to do and then it's like oh mm-hmm. yeah our early access was one new map and a new hero 
And then that's yeah. and now we're out of early access. Ooh, well, look, look at me. And this is um, only the second game I know of that's really done this pricing model where buying in early costs more than waiting because Planetary Annihilation did kind of the same thing. Yeah, and I mean it's it's fine. Like I, I'm not I'm not against it mainly because the price point was like that that they're asking isn't unreasonable for a full game. Like most full games are like sixty dollars, and really what what they want you to spend is closer to the 150 you know dollar range in gaming now like they really because development costs so much so they're like like okay we're gonna have to parse out some of this stuff so that you know we can actually make money as developers so we're gonna say okay well all these met this map pack is gonna cost you another 50 bucks and then this one's gonna cost you another 50 bucks you know and this one they're like it's a full game and everything you get and all the other ones are totally you could just get from playing um it it's just decent you, you might as well pick it up it doesn't really matter your friends that are you know too poor and they want to jump in later on you know like that's fine too they get a chance they'll have a chance to jump in it it's worth it i think it's totally worth it okay cool cool yeah so i have got one last game on my list to talk about um and and I haven't prefaced you guys at all because I, I want fresh answers to this. Okay. Um, okay. So I was editing podcast 39, which uh-huh. hopefully, please, for the love of God, I will get to release that either <laughs> later tonight or early tomorrow morning. I promise. <laughs> I know you all hate us. Um, but uh, while rendering the episode, it, it was sitting there crunching frames. And I'm like, eh, mm. I can't play anything, you know, too intensive. So what am I going to do? So so mm-hmm. I busted out I busted out this controller, which we've got some news on. And I've done a review on. Hit our YouTube channel, <laughs> um, and I fired up some Mario sixty four because I, I oh, wanted nice. to like sit there and like watch the render and watch the progress because I needed something I could like quickly back out of. I didn't want to get involved in anything, but right. I wanted to play something. So my go to game when I was bored out of my mind watching the progress bar go up was Mario sixty four. And I played about an hour, hour and a half of that and jumped off when the render was done. So my question to you guys, is there any go to game that you guys jump into when you're bored or when you're you just don't feel like getting into anything too heavy? I think Adam and I might have the same one, potentially. I jump into a Uh, fuck ton of the Binding of Isaac as a downtime game. Mine's mine's Rocket League. Yeah, mine's just Rocket League recently. It definitely used to be the Binding of Isaac, but I haven't played that as much lately. It's just sometimes just diving into free play and or into a trainer pack or into um, a jump map and just kind of floating around for a little bit while you wait. Like I have it on my uh, on the PS4 also. So sometimes when we're just waiting for friends to come over, just pop that on, just fly around, hit the ball. Yeah, some and it's, sometimes I do kind of like what you did, Tom. Is Sometimes I'll just launch a game I haven't played in a long time with no intention of really like playing through it again or doing anything like that. But I might, you know, I like, might launch up the forest, which I bought early access a long time ago. Every time I play it, there's something new. They added a bunch of stuff. They're actually really good about updating it. Um, so every once in a while, I'll just I'll launch that for maybe half an hour just to check out some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a beautiful game. Um, sometimes I'll start up like something like a puzzle game or something. I might start up Braid again or The Swapper. Just kind of go through the opening sections of that. Just any any game that I've I really liked and played a long time ago, I'll just launch it again and just play the first little bit of it. So Sidewinder in chat pulled out one that I, fi- I thought weird at first, and then I realized I actually kind of like doing something similar. It's Pokemon mm-hmm. Red. And it's weird as a throwaway, but just yeah. the first two gym area... I love grinding up to that first 20 levels and then just stomping Brock and Misty and then just bailing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly just played an ass load of skate in the past. Like it was just skate. You just go in, you save at your, like whatever park you like, and you just kind of skate around. You just vibe out to whatever music you're listening to. And, and you just try to hit that rail <laughs> a few times. You like, you just like boost a couple hips and then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to, head off uh, to like back, dinner but yeah. back it was, in my day tony hawk three nice. you just turn on some some tunes you rock out oh yeah 
Yeah, and, it's just like you try to you try to one run the foundry, which is always <laughs> great. Am I the only one who got more enjoyment out of the park editor than actually playing? Oh, no, I play uh, a lot of park editor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've edited I, a lot of parks. <laughs> yeah, the park editor back in, in my day. Yeah, Tony Hawk had some crazy stuff because you you like get absurd air off of like no mm-hmm. speed at all. So like you can do like quarter pipe, especially when they in, in, uh, got the transfer button. So like you, you just kept like going and you get bigger, bigger, bigger. So you like end up like going up all these quarter pipes like a big ladder, and then you just yeah. boost down <laughs> and then like yeah. yes, send yes. it to the moon. So, Certainly uh, not the most realistic of the skateboarding games. Yeah, but then you got into like Skate Three, and Skate Three had some had a really cool park editor where you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Like I made like a crazy intricate jump map that had like, mm-hmm. and then I made like a giant. There's a, there's a neat glitch actually in that that I made, where when you well I, I didn't invent it. I'm just saying I made this because I saw it. Um, if you come close to the ground level in Skate, you can start flipping infinitely because it thinks you're close to the GAN because that's how the rotations work in skate like you rotate the speed of your rotation is based on the height from the ground that you are so if you trick the game into thinking you're about to land you can like flip an extra flip so (laughs) so if you do like a a weird bar in the way or something like that you'll come up and then you can start doing like triple backflips over shit (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so and that's and i spent like hours trying to get that right like hours and hours and hours just <laughs> see i was always a jerk on my maps for tony hawk 3 i would always have this area where you'd have to grind a mile and then you get into the best half pipe <laughs> in the world so when i was playing with my buddies if they sucked at grinding they would get stomped because you'd have to like grind for an hour to get into this half pipe <laughs> oh, that's amazing and very that's dirty. Nice. Yeah, oh, no, I was, dude, I was a ruthless asshole. I just like to win. <laughs> yeah, we know, I, I Eric. Think, we know. Yeah, we, yeah we, I, we, I know. We're <laughs> well aware. Everyone knows this around here. I'm a dick. I, I think Tony Hawk 3 was really the perfect sequel to a game because 2, it had a park editor and you could make a skater, but like the parks were so small. You could do some cool stuff, but it was so limited. And mm-hmm. as a kid, the only thing I wanted was big ass parks of, to, yeah. to build. And Tony Hawk 3 is like, big ass parks? Yeah, we got those. We got you, dog. Here you go. Build right. the biggest fucking thing you can imagine. Mm-hmm. Which is still, I mean, it's pretty small by you know levels in today's standards when we have you know, continents to explore, but still. Right. Yeah, it's perfect. Like you really don't need a lot. Like if if like in skate, for instance, like that's the one that like I'm really thinking about a lot right now, because I just, you know, I just just need a skate for. Or even just port skate one. I don't care. I just need something. But uh New Skate in, damn it. Uh, come on, EA. I know you're not listening ever, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um no, the uh like you could do all sorts of wacky stuff in that in, in skates at Park Editor. Like you can start unsnapping things and, and you can break the like collision and stuff you can turn collision off so you like you're sticking ramps inside of ramps and like <laughs> rotating them on their axis oh, and so like, it's, it's so cool and it and like i used to love tony hawk's editor but everything you know everything snaps but then once you realize i can skate you can unsnap everything it's like like oh come on like you can't. Get nuts. <laughs> yeah it the just possibilities are endless the game lets yeah. you do what you want <laughs> some of the maps that you can see people build like it, they just look beautiful and like really deeply textured mm-hmm. because they're using like they'll have like a giant tree and they'll like submerge it into the ground so just little specks are sticking up to show accents of grass in the cracks of like oh god a sidewalk that's that's terrible. insane it's so good like <laughs> and sometimes they'll do like like they'll do a pool and then they'll raise this like water texture up with no collision so it looks like there's water still in the pool nice <laughs> it, it looks so good and they, they really spent some that's crazy that's fucking god we need some more of those games i feel that genre has just died well yeah. as soon as skate stopped everyone just stopped because tony hawk <clears throat> could, couldn't pick the torch back up they yeah. just, <laughs> after like, three, they, they dropped they tried. it they, uh, tried. Man, they well, really did the hd whatever and that failed too yeah, yes. we so all just early. we all just want another skate. Which <laughs> the HD remakes you might be seeing on our stream soon could have some fun yeah. stuff coming up. <laughs> but um, <laughs> enough of that. I think we pretty much hit the list. Um, you guys want to talk about a little bit what's happening out in the industry? 
Just, no. just a little bit. Let's maybe no uh, no nah, no. Nah. Nah. Just cut it off. Nah. Fuck the Bye, world. everybody. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> but no. Um, yeah. Let's, let's let's get into it a little there, bit. There was a, some interesting stuff. Um. So Stardew Valley, uh, the beta for the multiplayer is supposed to start by the end of this year. A little later than what nice. people initially thought because you know the switch like oh we're gonna get the first multiplayer for stardew and mm-hmm. the multiplayer is yet to even happen right so that's coming that'll be really fun i don't think you guys are much stardew players but i really enjoy the I, game i got it on a humble bundle and i have yet to give it any try at all or install it or look at it but you I might like it great things i've, I've heard really good things about it um, you like uh, Don't Starve. Granted, I mean that's not really the same thing, but the way we play mm-hmm. Don't Starve had elements of how you play Stardew. Okay. Like the farming survival aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I'm I think I haven't played more than an hour of Stardew because I know what's gonna fucking happen. And it's the same thing that happens every time I load up a Harvest Moon style game. Uh uh-huh. weeks. Weeks of my <laughs> life are just <laughs> gone in an instant. You made that so. Don't Starve parallel. See, I didn't like Don't Starve until Don't Starve Together came out, and then we played. That was so awesome. Really, the, the same case might be made for Stardew Valley, where you might not like the game that much solo, but once they introduce the multiplayer, you might find yourself getting really into it. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have to have like a community farm co-op and all go to farmer's markets together. I mean, Urk and I <laughs> live in Seattle now. Like, We can do this stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah. For the record, you, you can you know you know how how farmers markets work. Yeah, yeah, yeah virtual yeah. farmers market. It'll be great. Uh, yeah, they are they are capping it. It sounds I think they said four in the article, but they are capping the number, so it's not like a let's get uh, everyone. Not like a mass. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to. Yeah, I want a twenty four. Uh, twenty four person. Uh, this four, five by five farm. That I, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you got the carrots. I got the carrots. What do you, you got, got the potatoes? <laughs> That's all we yeah. got. We can, only fit, we can only fit the carrots. Right, oh, everybody, the press, everybody press E repeatedly <laughs> until we win. <laughs> yeah. Um, that would be amazing to like just sweep like, uh, <laughs> like a, uh, a cave or something. Just like sweep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like everyone just goes through. It's like, it's done. Grab it's the broom. Done. It's going to be a sweep. <laughs> oh, God, Tater. Oh, um, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, and there was also um, some really interesting news out of EA. So Titanfall 2, I know Adam and I played a little bit when it was free. Mm-hmm. Fantastic yeah. game. Well, really its sales were lackluster. It came out in a really bad time. Well, mm-hmm. EA is adding it to its access package. So for $30 mm-hmm. a month on Xbox or computer, EA lets you access a library of their games. They are adding that to the library of free games if you pay $30 a year. Hmm. <laughs> That's a really kind of like a big PlayStation t- Now sort yes. of thing. That is a big title for something like that. That's a big yeah. title for that. I mean, it's honestly like I might throw 30 for a year just to be able to play that a little bit because it's single player. So, it's supposed to be really good. So is that, that's PC, right? Like PC that, or well, Xbox. So, I think oh, you have to cool. choose the platform though. When you, I th- mm-hmm. they call it two different things. It's something through Origin for the computer and it's EA mm-hmm. Access on the Xbox and PlayStation. Okay. Oh, interesting. So it's too, It's weird that they're doing it that way, but I mean, 30 bucks for their library they give you, it's pretty good. They have some sports titles on there and this, so. Yeah, it's, yeah definitely. Titanfall 2 was, was a lot of fun. Um, I wouldn't say I'm going to go buy it, but when we played that one weekend, it was really good. Yeah, it's, well, uh, I wouldn't buy it necessarily because I haven't mm-hmm. really been bit by the shooters lately outside of Splatoon. Mm-hmm. But for right. thirty dollars for that and all the other stuff they have in their library, which is probably like Battlefield Four and probably like some Madden and NBA or not NBA, they don't do that anymore. But NHL games mm-hmm. and stuff. I like sports games, so to me that's worth it. But Yeah, I can see that. Um, there's some PUBG news I probably should have said earlier. Um, it is yeah. now <laughs> third on the Steam list for peak players it is past is fallout insane. 4 and gta 5 the Damn, only two, that's pretty crazy the only two games it hasn't peaked better than is csgo and dota 2 <laughs> wow now that's keep in mind awesome. i believe that would also be fair to say it probably hasn't passed league of legends either but league of legends yeah. is not on the steam peak stuff so it can't be measured mm-hmm. but i think it's safe right. to say it didn't pass league of legends either 
it would be I would say that's a safe bet. Yeah. Yeah, especially for an early access game that's not even technically out yet. Yes, <laughs> to hit that peak player base like that—that's incredible. It's, but I'm not surprised. Well, you know, go on your Steam's anybody that has Steam, go on your Steam friends list, and see how many of your friends are playing it right now. Like li- somebody's playing it always. <laughs> literally, when you said that, two people just popped on live. Yeah, <laughs> like just now they're like, oh, we're there's playing so that many. Game. There's so <laughs> much Battlegrounds being played. It's crazy, and I can see why. It's it's really really fun. Yeah, it's and it's such such a simple premise. We're gonna throw literally everybody in a map. Um, last dude standing, go yeah. for it. And like, these yeah, games have, and these games have been around for a while. It's not the first been. game to do this. It's a yeah, game it's mode just, as old as Doom itself. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's just funny that with all of that, it's it's not a new novel uh, concept, and it, the game's not out yet. And it's still doing that. Yeah, and it didn't put That's a crazy. whole lot of polish that the other ones didn't have. I mean, this doesn't mm-hmm. look substantially better. It doesn't control a fuck ton better. Mm-hmm. It's just it caught. The other ones didn't. H one Z one kind of yeah. did, but H one Z one did. A lot of people, a lot there of people was, jumped ship though once right. Battlegrounds started gaining momentum. Right. Yeah, I mean, as far as H one Z one, that was wildly popular. That was super mm-hmm. popular. Yeah, and, and Especially on Twitch, and then a lot of those. The reason Battlegrounds got so popular is because a lot of those H one Z one streamers just left and went to Battlegrounds, mm-hmm. uh, like the biggest ones. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I didn't play H one Z one at all, but I did hear that Battlegrounds kind of improved some of the things that H one Z one was lacking, and that's why a lot of people right. switched. I right. still maintain that removing the zombies and and for, focusing on the core experience of the game, which is really you know, bandits in the wilderness mm-hmm. um, really brought that game together into what it was destined to become all along. The, yeah. the zombies were really there in H1Z1 and Daisy is set dressing more or less. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, like, at least that's the way I feel. I know some people do feel differently about these games. Like the zombies added a whole lot. I don't think they ever did. I don't think that's why anyone played Daisy is to play it for being a zombie game. They played mm-hmm. it because you could get really weird, fun, emergent gameplay experiences with other players in a giant map that you you couldn't actually find anywhere else well i mean king of the kill which was the main the big one didn't have zombies in it Mm -hmm. well okay so so like there was so that's like the the one that you'd be talking about to directly compete with but it's it's an evolution i mean you really can't view battlegrounds without going back to arma 3 which had the right, Daisy right, mod, which launched Daisy, which launched King of the or um, H1Z1, right. which launched mm-hmm. King of the Kill, which is now here. And as right, um, exactly, and as Dino did those... point out, though the H1Z1 guy is player unknown's battleground guy. Right, I mean, exactly. A lot of those guys jump from one project to the next to the next, and then evolved it as they moved on with the different groups, which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. And now that they've got their their own engine, which Sidewinder points out, um, they've got their own engine. They've got their own company. They're doing things their own way. But mm-hmm. they're they're as independent as independents can get. They're beholden to no mod, no weird engine, uh, nothing except how creative they wanted to get with their game. And you you can look at the numbers. That shit's paying off, right? right. They're they're, do, they're building this game the way they want to without the constraints that they were under previously, and it shows. They're not on it's the Arma engine game. anymore? No, right, I should no, say no, 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 no. no. Dis- disregard is, uh, anymore. I didn't mean to say anymore there, but... It, yeah, I, so PUBG, they're, I want to say they're using Unreal, right? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. That but, sounds right. Uh, so... Well, let me see. Uh, PUBG is right now the only early access game outside of VR that I can, you know unqualified say yeah you should probably go buy this game it's mm-hmm. good enough to buy it don't pay attention to early access mm-hmm. yeah it's not so polished but you don't need it it's just fuck tons of fun yeah absolutely. yeah okay Every, everyone is confirming it is unreal 4 right and i just okay. checked on it it's unreal 4 so yeah. we're good <laughs> and h1z1 is on the cancer engine dear god okay nice. so uh, <laughs> let's get no, off that, of this accurate. that's accurate yeah, uh, Tom, you have some uh, firmware updates, I think, for the 8-bit DO, 3DO, yes, the, that yes. thing. This guy, the this thing. guy, the 8-bit DO, 
uh, NES 30 Pro Gamepad. This little guy. Okay, so um, I had all the numbers right. It's not in the right order. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, I fine. can never remember the name of this. That's why I have to look on the back at this convenient label. Um, <laughs> the, the most inconvenient naming of all time. Mm-hmm. But um, this little dude, you know, I bought it. I was thinking, okay, cool. It's a controller. It's never going to see updates. I don't really need it. It works out of the box, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, 8-Bit, though, just put out a firmware revision that lets you use this wirelessly with your Nintendo Switch. So nice. if you want a pro-style gamepad that works with your Nintendo Switch, um, some YouTube reports are confirming that, yes, it works. Slap the firmware on it, and you're done. Uh, wow. Which is really fucking cool. I had no idea when I bought this little shitty controller that I could use it with <laughs> literally everything now. I'm so happy. So oh, when, yeah, they, cool. when they launch the VC in three years for the Switch, yeah. I might have to pick that up. Right. <laughs> I, well, I don't know. So I'm playing stuff like Cave Story and Shovel Knight and 8-bit-ish games that I'm buying on the Nintendo eShop. Mm. Uh, and this would be perfect for Shovel Knight. Yeah. Does it feel that much better than the Joy-Cons do when attached to the Switch? The issue with the Joy-Cons is your directional buttons look like this. They're actual separate buttons. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not a D-pad. So if you want an actual D-pad, you either have to get a Pro Controller or use one of these guys. And the reason okay. they do that is because they need it to work in both orientations for mm-hmm. when you break your controller apart and hand someone the other piece for Mario Kart. Right, um, right. So it, it's a rational design decision. It just kind of sucks for the 8-bit classics and fighting games. Okay. Yeah, fighting games, you Makes want sense. that crisp. And also, I heard an f- interesting factoid on that, that, um, what was it, uh, Street Fighter 2 for the Switch, when it got released on their little thing, sold like 450,000 copies. People are oh, wow. starving yeah. for content on this damn thing still. Which just released Overcook, which is actually a game I think that controller would be great for. Oh, they did. Yeah, Overcook, the enhanced edition, so it has that DLC pack, is now available on Switch, which is cool. That's great. I really, really like Overcooked. And now they just need internet support. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so you can party up over it. Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> you about that. <laughs> no. Some sort of party system for that game. You can't even do it on Steam. You can't do it on PC. You can't group up. I hate that. That's like, yeah. it's a really good game, it's, but it's like you're, you're strapped to your couch. That's all right. you got. It is such a good game. Such a fucking good game. <laughs> Um, and uh, one little quick fun tidbit. Um, it seems that Alton Brown is now interested in things Nintendo, more specifically Splatoon. Would you like to elaborate a little bit on this, Tom? Because this is weird so, that it was brought up. <laughs> so this this is really just shit posting to shit post. Um, AKA Tom. So, yeah. So just me. So I threw this in the news. Um, <laughs> someone someone asked Alton Brown, "Hey, uh, settle this, mayo or ketchup." Uh, we're going to war over it this weekend. You could turn the tides of battle. And Alton Brown responded with, well, it depends what it's going on. <laughs> so he, he hasn't taken a side. The Splatfest of Mayo versus Ketchup is still undecided. Ketchup's wow. going to win, guys. Come on. It's not undecided. <laughs> but yeah. either way, either way, I really want Alton Brown to get in on these food-based Splatfests because I think that would be absolutely hilarious. Also, I heard a rumor that Good Eats is coming back. So, oh yes, fuck yes, I'm so ready. Good Eats was such a good show. Cooking so with really science. <laughs> oh, Cooking it's amazing. With science. Actually, it just needs to be what they call the fucking show. If if you haven't <laughs> watched Good Eats, go to YouTube. There are episodes yeah. on there. They're probably of questionable legality. Maybe I don't know. They mm-hmm. could have gotten the copyright sign off from from the people who. Own I know you Good can Eats. purchase you can purchase the episodes on YouTube. I know to watch them, but. So, um, there used yep. to be a collection of them also on Netflix. I don't know if it's still on there, if they took it off, but there was a collection of, of the Good Eats episodes. So hit your favorite video streaming service, Fire Up mm-hmm. Good Eats. It's honestly the best cooking show I've ever seen because yep. he's Bill Nye, but with food. He's like, yeah. hey, this is why bread rises. This is why your shit tastes nasty because mm-hmm. of this weird chemical thing. To prevent it, we're going to use this thing to do this other thing that inhibits yep. this uh, chemical reaction. It's right. fucking science, man, and it's delicious. <laughs> yes, <laughs> science is delicious. <laughs> it's good eats. Ah, uh, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Fuck. Yeah. Well, anyway, I think that's about all we got for you guys this week for the actual podcast. Um, yes. Do got a little um, news flash 
after the cast, as we said, we will be doing some more post cast gaming. Last week we did some TKO and Squiplash 2. It was a good old time as normal with the Jackbox games. This week, as we said, GTA 5. Just a few minutes after the stream cuts, we will be starting back up the stream and launching GTA 5. Everyone come to our Discord server, jump on in, have a good time, bullshit, kill people, shoot things. We'll we're gonna post- we're gonna throw that link in the chat. Yes, yep, I got it, is, it right now. It is in chat now. It is in chat okay. as well as we will post it to the server or the Twitch channel as well. Um and yeah, so come join the postcast. And I think we definitely. had a few call outs we'd like to do this week. Yeah, definitely. Uh we had two followers during the stream. Sidewinder, we know who you are. Thank you for following. <laughs> we and, know uh, who you Mr. are. <laughs> yeah, we know who you are. We, we know, know where you sleep. We all know <laughs> Sidewinder. <laughs> He's winding sides. That's just what he does. <laughs> so thanks for following. And Mr. Successful, thank you for following as well. Thank you. Appreciate that. And Much as always, um, you can follow us on Twitter. Let us know what you think of the cast. How long we drone on Dark Souls is getting old. Let us know. Um, whatever you want us to uh, play We're still on. still going to talk about it. Whatever you want yeah. us to play on postcast, let us know. Um, you can Absolutely. come to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're starting to update with a little more content with the Dark Souls stuff, as well as we are going to start launching a couple new series in the future. Mm-hmm. So keep an eye on that. We are hoping to kind of freshen it up a little bit. We know we've been a little stale, so um, we're going to liven it up a little bit, give you a little bit of good <laughs> shit to look at. Um, also, if you need some RSS for our podcast, you can go to 72pinconnector.com and uh, pick up your RSS feeds there, as well as our links to Discord and our Twitch and all that fun shit. And if you are watching on YouTube, thank you. Click that subscribe button. But you can <laughs> always come watch us live, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturday nights, and be part of the chat. We try to be a little interactive, but it's a good time. Come join us. <laughs> and I think that's all we got for you this week. So, until next week. Game on. See you, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you.